from the waiting room. Good afternoon. If you're just coming in from the waiting room, we are going to give it another minute or two for everyone to trickle in here and then we'll get started. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Good afternoon. Thank you all so much for taking time out of your afternoon to join us here for our 10th QCC webinar. Uh, this one today is Staffing Strategies, Growing Your Team While Boosting Morale. My name is Kelly Warner. I'm a program manager with the LA County Department of Public Health, Nutrition and Physical Activity Program, and I'm going to be the moderator for today. We can go to the next slide. So we will go ahead and just get started with some housekeeping items. So as usual, if you encounter any technical difficulties, first try signing off and re-entering the webinar. Um, if you're still having difficulties, that you can use the chat box to get help. Our awesome tech support, Tommy, is here to assist. Hopefully we're all experts by, with Zoom by now, but uh, things always come up. So we're, we're here to help if uh, anyone has any technical difficulties. Everyone is in listen only mode, um, but we do have the chat box and the Q&A uh, option enabled. So if you have questions for our speakers, we're gonna have time for Q&A at the end of the webinar. So please go ahead and enter your questions as we go along uh, into the Q&A box, and then you're welcome to put anything in the chat as well uh, throughout the webinar. This webinar is being recorded as usual. It will be sent via email along with our presentations. We can go to the next slide. So this uh, webinar series has uh, been facilitated and, and orchestrated by the Quad County School Meals Access Collaborative, uh, which many of you are, are familiar with it. at this point. We call ourselves the QCC. So here's the, the team. And um, today I just want to give a really special thank you to the, the No Kid Hungry team um, just for all of, of their hard work and, and behind the scenes efforts to, to make these webinars happen. And so big, big thank you to the No Kid Hungry team. Um, we have a, a really great lineup of speakers today. As usual, we're going to focus on staff morale and hiring. Um, we'll hear lots of great ideas and we have a few uh, special guests. So with that, we'll go ahead and go to the next slide. Uh, as usual, we'll start with some uh, CNAP updates. I get to go first. So I'm also the uh, co-chair or CNAP coordinator. Our CNAP is we call Nutrition Access LA. So for those of you who are, who are based in LA County, please feel free to reach out to me if you're interested in joining the listserv. Um, my email is here on the screen. Um, I can put it in the chat as well. We've got a couple events coming up um, in May. In LA County, we also celebrate CalFresh Awareness Month. We have a kickoff event that's scheduled for Thursday, May 4th. Uh, it's going to be from 9 to 2 at uh, Amelia Mayberry Park, which is located in Whittier. We'll have a whole resource fair and, and special guest speakers. If you're interested in participating or attending, feel free to reach out to me. And then our next uh, coalition meeting is going to be virtual. It's on Monday, May 22nd from 2 to 3.30. Again, let me know if you're interested in joining. We'll have some uh, registration details out soon. And with that, I'm going to pass it over to Gina for some Orange County updates. Good afternoon, everybody. I'm Gina Osborne, and I'm a supervising public health nutritionist at the Orange County Healthcare Agency. And I am the CNAP coordinator for Orange County, uh, the Community Nutrition Action Partnership. And uh, we have a couple of updates. So just like Kelly, we're going to be recognizing um, CalFresh Awareness Month in May, and we'll be coordinating with several partners, including our social services agency and Cal Optima Health um, for different activities throughout the month of May. 
Uh, we're also sharing resources with all of our partners related to the end of the CalFresh emergency allotment and the Medi-Cal redetermination. And our next meeting will be on July 11th. It will be virtual and it will be 9 to 11. And if you're interested in attending the meeting or receiving um, updates via our listserv, you can contact me. My email is here on the slide and I will also put it in the chat for you. And I will now pass it over to Andrea in Riverside. Thank you. Hi, everyone. My name is Andrea Mori. I'm a program coordinator at Riverside uh, University Health System, Public Health. Um, we don't have a lot of CNAP updates for you today, but our next meeting will be June 29th on Zoom. And my contact information is on the slide. And I believe I'm throwing it to Robin for San Bernardino. Yes, thank you, Andrea. For San Bernardino County, um, CNAP, I am the coordinator. And coming up on Wednesday, May 3rd, from two to three, we're having our third in the series of All About Summer Meals virtual meeting. Um, my email is down below. And so if you would like to attend, please let me know. Also, we're celebrating Rethink Your Drink Day at Redlands East Valley High School with Redlands uh, uh, Unified School District to celebrate the over 100 hydration stations that they placed um, into their 25 schools in their district. And so that'll be, it won't be May 10th, it'll probably be either the 9th or the 11th. That date has had to change. Also, there are summer meal kickoff events and um, Hesperia School District is having theirs on Thursday, June 1st. Rialto is having theirs on Friday, June 9th, and also a pump it up event on um, in July on that Friday. And then in Adelanto, they're having a kickoff also on Friday, June 9th. So please, if you're interested in seeing what wonderful um, kickoff events there are and how school districts uh, do them, feel free to um, join. And also we're having um, our general CNAP meeting. It'll be on Wednesday, June 28th, 9.30 at the Dorothy Ingram Learning Center. It will be an on-person meeting. So thank you. And my information is below. And um, I will hand it back to Kelly. Thank you, Robin, and everyone for your updates. Great to hear all that's going on. And Robin, those, those summer mail kickoff is are really exciting. Love to see those. Um, and next up, we are going to pass it over to Dr. Betty Crocker. Thank you, Betty, for being here um, and for providing a school nutrition policy update. I always learn a ton from you. So take it away. You are so kind. Um, thank you so much. Uh, hello, QCC audience. And I just wanted to give a shout out to uh, Ms. Robin Ronkis for helping us out with the Rethink Your Drink Day celebration over here um, at Rev High School. And we are confirmed for May 9th, if we have any uh, followers for that. And so um, I just kind of wanted to start off um, our little policy update. Um, I have a lot of um, information and a lot of um, news for you. Yet I wanted to um, just remind all of us that we are in a very sensitive time right now. We are in the middle of farm bill. We're in the middle of um, the child nutrition reauthorization and it can get super confusing in a minute. I hope to uh, kind of flatten that out and let everybody um, know just in plain, simple English what's going on. Um, I have the privilege to uh, serve as a director of child nutrition services at Redlands Unified School District. I also have the privilege to serve as the chair for Southern California School Nutrition Association and I've recently been appointed um, the Region 9 representative for the Super Co-op, which is our commodities. Next slide, please, Tommy. So this time I'm providing all of our updates um, on one slide. Uh, and I have them broken down into uh, national, state, and local. Uh, on the national scene, this is where um, you're going to find the biggest news. And we have uh, some devastating news for our school nutrition funding. Um, the Keep Kids Fed Act is going to be expiring uh, June 30th, uh, 2023. This was the funding that was provided for this year to address um, all of the increases that we've been facing with labor and also um, the food supply. Uh, that's provided an additional 40 cents uh, for lunch and 15 cents for breakfast. Um, this will expire on the 30th of June, as I said, and we do not have um, anything uh, that has been approved in its place. What we are working on is Healthy Meals Help Kids Learn Act, which is H.R. 1269. That's a McGovern bill. I'm very proud of our um, California Congresswoman, um, Judy Chu, 
who has also um, co-authored this. Uh, what the proposal is, so we, we stop going back and forth every year, is um, the proposal is that a permanent increase with the federal reimbursement beginning with 45 cents for each lunch served and 28 cents for each breakfast. And then there's some language inside of there that will also address all of the increases every year using a CPI index. Um, what the devastating news is, is that it's not very optimistic that this will be passing. And um, we've been meeting with uh, many different directors and some directors have already uh, dialed back their uh, budget with the 40 cents and the 15 cents. So um, just this is just one that's really close to watch. We have the Child Nutrition Reauthorization um, Act that's live and also the Farm Bill that's live. Um, the sequence of these will uh, be the Farm Bill. Uh, and it, should the Farm Bill be successful, then we will move into the CNR. And that's the sequence that was provided at our conference that we just concluded yesterday. Um, and that's the ACTA conference, the American Commodities Distribution and Association. And I'm gonna give you some links to all of these um, if you wanna follow up on any of those, Roger. Um, the policy guy, he gave us a very generous update yesterday, and um, the beat on the street is that the Healthy uh, Meals Help Kids Learn Act, the HR 1269, is, is most likely not going to go. And SNA's uh, informal opinion that was provided yesterday as well is the same. So I'm very concerned um, about losing uh, this funding. Uh, we also have uh, a few things um, uh, coming up. The first one is on the um, national level is the School Nutrition Association is our national uh, association. And we have our annual nutrition conference. We call it affectionately ANC because we are the people that love acronyms. Um, so we have ANC uh, in Denver, uh, July 9th through 11th. And again, I promise to uh, provide you all of these links as soon as we're done here. And then um, the other thing that just finished on the national level, we are organized um, for our commodities and there's a really good representation of school nutrition inside of theirs. They actually call us. I found out my new name is uh, RA. I'm, uh, we are a recipient agent of uh, commodities and commodities is where we get our food from for all of the federal funding. It's a, it's a very um, complex, it's amazing that we even feed children with all of the complexities yet somehow we manage all things. These are just wonderful organizations to um, get involved with both SNA and also um, ACTA. Now on the state scene, um, we just wrapped up our um, visit with Sacramento, our legislative action conference at the end of March um, it was very productive. And uh, the thing that we have to report is that um, Skinner is presenting the SB 348 which she is calling uh, pupil meals. Essentially, this is addressing everything on universal meals that we got out and learned, right? This is our first year of universal meals. And there's a few things that we have learned. Um, one of them um, is that we're having some challenges uh, during the minimum day with the new meal mandate. And so one of the things to address this challenge on minimum days is that it would uh, potentially authorize us to only have breakfast required on these minimum days. And then the other um, big thing that they're looking at is the adequate time to eat. Now, this would should this pass, this would be something that the CDE would pass through all of us to get a survey, and then they would make the recommendation um, to our friends in Sacramento. And uh, then the permanent feature of summer PEBT, this will be permanent as of uh, summer uh, 2024, so that's next summer. At the federal level, uh, the summer PEBT, uh, would be $40. And what the state is proposing um, with this uh, people's meals is an additional $80 a month. So that would be $120 for our, um, for our children, families for uh, every summer as a permanent feature. And um, there's promising news on the SB 348. It was passed out of the Senate Education Committee, a 7-0 vote. Um, this is definitely one um, that we will be uh, watching. And then on the local scene, the local scene means SoCal. And so um, we have a Southern California School Nutrition Association. We are also known as Chapter One. We have our next meeting. It's actually an installation meeting as well on May 19th at um, Cal Poly uh, Pomona. And I'm going to send you all the links here in just uh, one moment. And um, I, I think I get to pass it back to, is it Kelly? Back to me. Thank you. Oh, I, for forgot, I forgot my thank you slide. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, how could I forget to say thank you? 
Um, one of the things I always try to do is provide you my um, website because uh, that's usually the easiest um, way to get a hold of us if you need to see what's going on in Redlands. Awesome. Betty, thank you so much. Thanks also for dropping all of the um, links in the chat for all of those resources. Um, really appreciate the updates to, and to hear federal, state, local updates. And then most importantly, I think opportunities to, to respond and, and get involved. So thanks so much uh, for your updates. Absolutely. Thank you. Uh, and for our next presentation, uh, we have our first very special guest is Janet Barth. Uh, Janet is going to be speaking on staff morale in the opening year meeting. And Janet is the Director of Nutritional Services at Morongo Unified School District. Janet's been in school nutrition for 30 years and found her passion for school nutrition when she took a part-time position as a lunch lady. So we are looking forward to hearing more about the appealing and nutritious meals you provide for your students, Janet. Take it away. Hi, thanks Kelly so much. So I'm here to talk about staff morale and I relate that quite a bit to our back to school meeting. So when our folks walk, walk, walk into our back to school meeting, they see a party, they see a place for them. It's not the school, it's about them. So this is one of ours, when, when they walked in, this was on the big screens everywhere to be our guest, because indeed at our back to school meetings, they are our guest. Next screen, please. So we're talking about staff morale. We're talking about who, what, when, where, and why, and of course, there might be a few extras. Next screen. So here's why we do it. The who, it's all of our employees. Although our number one goal is to feed the kids and to make sure they have nutritious meals so they can learn healthy. One of our most important things that we need to do is feed our staff. Feed them so that they know that they are the most important thing and they are what keeps our department running. It's not about me. It's about them. And they're the ones that make the kids day every single day. Now, our district is 60 miles from one end to the other, and it's about the size of Rhode Island. So we have a few extra challenges in there, but you can see this is one of our back to school meetings that we always have a lot of fun. Next screen. So what is staff morale? I went ahead and looked it up, you know, Google, our best friend, of course, and here's four different um, definitions that it gave. And you'll notice when you read the four definitions, the most important thing that you see is satisfaction. And that satisfaction isn't about the students, that's about our staff. So how do we get that staff, that our staff to feel satisfied in their job and want to come to work? Well, let's go to the next screen and check it out. Well, I guess we better go the why first. What's the importance of staff morale? For me, staff morale increases our family. We talk about our department as family. We are each as important to the family as the other. And we want to make sure that everyone feels loved for lack of another word at all times. Um, when you have a good staff morale, you have that team feeling. You bring out creativity in your, in your staff. When they feel like they have ownership, they want to give input. Um, it helps with the acceptance of change. With so much change we've had lately, you know, change is hard for everyone. But if you have a good staff morale, then to, they just group together and want to make it work. Good staff morale increases your attendance and productivity, and it reduces stress, which, you know, could come from turnaround, hostile environment. Right now, we don't have enough people working. And somehow, you see it in your kitchens and we see it in ours, that we all group together and we make it work anyway. Next slide. So when, back to school, that's when we start. Each school year, we have a two-day back-to-school event. Um, it's, it's a time that we can share our passion for what we do. It's a time to make them feel invigorated 
and ready to meet the students and make it a really great year. So we feel like this is the best time to really give our best effort to all of them. Next slide. Then comes the how. And I just think I could have been a wedding planner because planning a party is what I love. And so here's just some key things to do when you're doing that. Start early. As we know, things change. Um, we don't get things as quickly as we need them to arrive to us. And sometimes if I think of one idea, someone else will just play on that idea. And before you know it, you have a big blown out event that's gonna happen. You wanna start early so that you're organized and so that you can ensure a good outcome. So the next thing you know to think about is who's your team? For us, we use our district office staff. We don't use any of the kitchen staff unless we have to, because this is truly our party that we are giving to them. We don't want them to have to work through the party. We want it to be enjoyable so that they can group together and build their team. Next slide. Oh, planning the party. This is where it gets fun. You have to look and see what topics you need to cover this year. There's always several that we have to cover. But knowing your team, you know what they need right now. Do they need to communicate better? Do they need the procedures, you know, re-ran through? What do they need? After COVID, we really focused on employee wellness. Um, we had a whole, a whole year focused on taking care of our staff. And of course, then there's the theme. We are Disney fanatics here. So Disney is our way of pulling together a little bit of kid out of all of us. So make sure it's relatable to the topic. Um, last year, we did Alice in Wonderland. And because we were coming back from COVID and sometimes it kind of felt like we were going down the rabbit hole. Things were changing so quickly. Make it fun. Make everyone feel welcome. Um, make it an event. Next screen, please. Planning the party, you got to figure out where you want to have it. Um, obviously, we're 60 miles from one end to the other, so we try to do a central location. We want to make sure we have good technology so that the screen isn't just up in the front because we have 100 people. We want all of them to be able to see what we're doing. Make sure that you have good parking. Make sure you put in that use of facilities early, and then you get to your agenda. You want to think about what's going to complete your CEUs for all your staff. You want to think about guests. We always have the district administration come, our superintendent or our assistant superintendent. Um, we're blessed that we have an assistant superintendent that used to be a food service director, so she loves to come to our events. You want to bring in inspirational speakers. You want to talk about food safety. And this year, we're hoping to have some Disney training as well. Another thing you want to do is fit in lunches and breaks. And you can see that I wrote catered meals. That's because again, this is their party. You don't want them to cook. Let them enjoy the day. And of course, you see my think out, outside of the box on the side there. Don't just think outside of the box. Flip the box upside down and come up with incredible ways to make this a party. Next. It's all about the extras. Like I said, the first thing, food. Feed your team. Don't make them cook. They've got this. Of course, then we have gifts. During our party, we always give away gifts. And a lot of people say, well, how can you do that? Because you can't spend the money on gifts for your staff. Well, you know, when your staff has ownership in your kitchen, gifts for the kitchen is gifts for them. So if you do maybe new kitchen supplies, we usually have prizes up on the front. We'll have new knives, new cutting boards, all in fancy colors. So they think they're getting something super special because they are. We went out of our way to pick it for them because we thought they would like it. Make sure the atmosphere is awesome. I wrote decorations on steroids and I mean that. From the walls to the ceilings, from when they walk in the door, the, the screen, make them feel like they're transported into the theme that you put on. Another thing is time. Make sure everything is completed before you start the day. 
so that when your team starts walking in, you take the time to greet each and every one of them. Make sure that they know that you took the time to say, hello, how are you? What did you do this summer? Because you are building those relationships. And one of the most important things, I know I'm running long here, is keeping busy hands. They say that people learn better if they have busy hands. And you know, while that seems kind of odd, you think, wow, if you're sitting there and focusing, you're gonna learn better. If your hands are busy doing something, then you tend to learn better. We have competitions. We have team photos. Every year we have team photos. We have guest speakers. And we incorporate that into what topics we need to cover. And of course, we always have music. Next screen. Here's some of the extras you can see that we offer. We always have Las Palmas, which is one of our really great restaurants here in town, cater a meal. They give us a school district price. Um, in the middle, you can see that those are some of our prizes. And those are cute little signs that have talk about proteins and grains and fruits and veggies, which the, kitchen, the kitchens love to win those as prizes to decorate their kitchen. We have guest speakers. And then on the right, you can see those little houses. That's because one of our out of the box thinking was to keep their hands busy is they got to decorate a house because our theme was up from Disney. So as they answered questions correctly, they could go up and pick something off of the stage that was maybe paint or balloons or sparkles. So it encouraged them to answer the questions. So of course they had to listen well to the training, but they also still had things to do with their hands. Next slide. This is how we greet them. Um, there's nothing like driving up to the parking lot and seeing these signs. You immediately feel a rush of happy and good. Um, it one, was one of our favorite, favorite things that we did. Next slide. These are just some of the crazy ways that, you know, we greet our folks. There's our agenda, our Mad Hatter training. We truly teach out of the box. You can see the hats on all of the folks here. That's a training where we were teaching how to train. And it's as simple as just going through and making it work. This one here is um, card stack. And you can see on this next slide, those are all nutrition cards that they could hand out to the students or have little bits of information to share with the students as they go through the line. Next slide. We had one event that we did all about making great looking catering items and how they could put, make these things and put them on the serving line. And they had two hours to actually play with food and make the best food, the food that they could. So you can see there in the middle, we have what's a cactus and that was our winning, but everyone had hands on and it was also CEUs because you are learning how to deal with the different food product. Next slide. But why, why do we do this? That's the biggest thing. And that's because we want our employees to have job satisfaction. We want them to love to be at work. We want them to want to come to our trainings and we want, them to know that we choose to do this for them and that we are passionate about what we do. Here's just some silly photos. Um, every event is a party. So if anybody ever wants to come on out, you're more than welcome. Thank you. I miss giving a round of applause <laughs> in person. I, I do miss that. So I, I want to give you a round of applause, Janet. And just say thank you. Thanks for a great presentation. It's it's so great to hear, you know, how you make everyone on your team feel just so valued and, and that it's fun, you know, that it's it's fun to come to work and feel like you're part of a, a team and a family. I love too how you incorporate all types of learners, um, you know, through through your meetings. And I, I just think you had some really great suggestions there. So thank you so much. Thank you. Feel free to, to type any questions in the chat or in the QA function. 
we got a message from Tommy that the, the chat function has been fixed. Um, so if you weren't able to, for our attendees, enter any questions or um, anything in the chat, it should be working uh, for everyone now. So feel free to, to chime in with any questions. I am curious about your, your Disney training. So um, more, more questions to come later. Um, but with that, we'll move on uh, to our next speaker. We are um, fortunate to hear from Kristen Hillman today, who is the uh, director, too, of, of Food and Nutrition Services for Capistrano Unified School District in South Orange County. Kristen is an experienced school nutrition specialist with a Bachelor of Science degree in Health Science and Nutrition and over 20 years of experience in healthcare, healthcare food services and child nutrition. So thank you so much, uh, Kristen. I'll pass it over to you. Thanks, Kelly. Hello, everyone. So I am going to talk to you guys about how to implement a successful job fair for your department. Um, my team has done an excellent job with this. This year, we've had um, at least two job fairs just for food and nutrition services here at our central kitchen. Um, and we've participated in two or three job fairs with our district at large as well. Um, we realized that participating with our district at large didn't give us the bang for our buck that we were looking for. So we worked with human resources and decided to go out on our own um, and bring the job fair here to our central kitchen. So next slide, please. So definitely work with human resources. That's a big, big deal. And first and foremost, just making sure you're following all of their procedures and protocols to set up a successful job fair. Um, our team has been very, very successful in, in doing this. You know, I'm not saying we've gleaned, you know, more than a handful or two of new employees, but in our world right now, that's a big deal. And so to have even one or two brand new people from the outside world coming into our program is huge. Um, one of the biggest things is to really look at your program, look at your operation and make sure you already have posted all the positions that you know you need to fill um, and, and make sure you have them posted for an appropriate time frame to incorporate it within your job fair. Next slide, please. So setting your date and time for your job fair, making sure you give yourself, your team, human resources, that window of opportunity to bring people in. Um, you know, you don't want to make it really short, an hour or so. You want to give yourself half of a day. Um, so we're, we've typically done them from like nine to noon or later in the afternoon, you know, from 11 to two, something like that. So give yourself time to set up, have people come fill out applications on site, all of those different pieces and parts that tie into a successful job fair. And make sure that those positions that you have posted don't close prior to your job fair date, because that kind of defeats the purpose of the position, trying to fill it during the job fair. Um, and secure a location. So we held our job fair here at our central kitchen because we have a decent break area where our front doors lead right into it. And it's just a decent area for people to come in, sit down, be able to fill out an application on site, and then come into our office space where we have a small conference room that we can do an interview in, in more of a secluded area where it's not, you know, everybody around. So look for those spaces. It might be something at your district office. Maybe you do have something available within your nutrition department area, but have a space big enough to host a, you know, a group of people. It doesn't have to be huge, but you're, you want to, you want to plan for something bigger than, than just a little bit. Um, next slide, please. Create a flyer. Um, Create a flyer that you can utilize for social media, a flyer you can utilize for passing out, printing and passing out, sending to school sites, sending in out into your community. So create a flyer that you can use for multiple purposes. Next slide, please. 
A picture is always a great reinforcement. Um, you know, this kind of tells a story for you. You you want to have all the deets, all the details on your flyer. You know, the date, the time, the location, how to connect with you if if somebody has a question, and then a small snippet of information about the actual job or jobs available, but. Nine times out of 10, people are very visual. So having a picture available for them to see, oh, okay, I have to wear gloves. I got to wear a hairnet. Hmm. I don't like to mess up my do. So, you know, things like that. I'm working at a table. I'm working with food. Like, you know, it's amazing how many people don't know what we do in food services. And then they come and they start to work and they're like, this is not for me. You know, it's not Thanksgiving dinner every day. That's not what the, what we're doing. You know, we're doing like Thanksgiving dinner on steroids. So um, it's, it's a really great way to support your flyer, support your, your job fair details. Next slide, please. So some of the other features I talked about already, you know, making it representative of your community. Who are you trying to employ? What are the groups of people that you're in search of? Um, Add a catchy phrase, a brief description of the job or jobs available, the photo, a QR code that somebody can use their phone and take a picture of and get more information, links to your website, links to the, to the actual like job application online, whether your district uses EdJoin or the, um, the government, I uh, can't remember the actual website because we don't use that here, but some districts use like a specific government website um, that's different from EdJoin. Um, and then, of course, the date, the address, the contact information, make sure it's all very clear and concise. Next slide, please. And then share your post, advertise. Um, you know, we've done a really great job with our Instagram page, I think. So I'm going to toot our horn, um, Capo Food. <laughs> um, but we we put our, our posts out Um we make sure that you know we run it as a story. We make sure we run it as an actual post so people can see it and go back to it. Um, and we'll run it a couple of times prior to the actual day of the job fair. We'll do a save the date and then right up at the time of the job fair, we'll run it again. Hey, reminder, we're having this. Work with your communications team at your district. Um, have somebody post it on LinkedIn work with your internal employees and have them reach out to friends and family and the person they met on the corner, who knows, um, you know, the friend that they met next door at the gas pump, um, you know, post it at your school sites, send it out to the office managers and principals. We, we send things through our principals bulletins almost every week we have something in there about what's going on in our department, just so we can make sure that we're not forgotten. Um, coffee shops, laundromats, churches, gyms, and then local advertisements. We have um, local little newspapers that come out weekly in uh, San Juan Capistrano, in San Clemente, in Dana Point, and around in other parts of our district. And so we will expend funds to put different advertisements in at times. So hiring fairs, when we're looking for mass quantities of people, like we have been over the last few years, trying to fill 40 plus positions. Um, you know, anytime we're doing something special, like summer meal information, things like that, we'll, we'll pay to have local advertisements run in these local newspapers or magazines that we know people pick up and utilize. And then also make sure your posts are representative of your communities as well. So, you know, they're in English and Spanish or, or they're in Mandarin or whatever represents your community at large. Next slide, please. Um, make sure your hiring process is able to be expedited on that day. Um, when we've worked with the district at large, there's been times where they have paid to have the live scan on site that day for those people coming to the job fairs. Um, we haven't done that for food and nutrition services specifically, but we talked about it and it was thought that it wasn't that necessary, um, but have paper applications available. I know that's not you know, really that 
exciting anymore. We want people to apply online. It kind of, it helps the process, but the last time we had a job fair, which you could have seen on the last slide, was March 2nd. And what we did was the people that had applied online, we called and scheduled them to come to the job fair for interviews. And then we had other people who just walked in because they read about it or heard about it. And they were able to fill out a paper application. We were able to interview everybody on site day of but it just helped us kind of navigate those individuals who had already applied on ed, EdJoin online versus those individuals who came in off the street and applied on that paper application. Have a sign-in sheet so you can keep track and make sure that you have all the different applicants when you finish your day. Um, have refreshments, make it fun, make it like a little party. It's, you know, you want people to enjoy coming to your operation, coming to work because they're your future employees. So depending on the time you have your job fair, have refreshments available, um, have an interview packet for whomever is interviewing and have an interview team. So we always make sure a couple of days prior to the job fair, we have the, you know, the information, our questions, our recommendations to hire, paperwork, anything we need to have on our end to facilitate the actual interview and to facilitate the next step for that future employee. Have swag. So if your district passes out lanyards or, you know, you work with schools first, they have the squishy buses or the cool pens or any of that kind of fun stuff, your distributors or whomever you can get little fun, you know, tchotchkes and swag from, have that available. People love that stuff. It's, you know, when it's free, my, my friend from high school always said, if it's free, take two. Um, Banners, have banners available that you can put outside of your area, outside of maybe your district or school sites and yard signs. We are kind of in a weird location. Um, so we go day of, morning of, we typically go out with a bunch of yard signs that have arrows pointing in all different directions. And we try to configure the best possible directions to our facility for anybody driving off the street. And we've had a lot of people that see our yard signs and actually come in for the job fair. We had one lady who was heading to Costco one day and was like, well, I just came by to check it out. She's working at one of our schools now. It's awesome. Um, have your interview team, which we already discussed, and then your check-in team, somebody who's sitting out and, you know, welcoming your future employees and checking them in, making, getting, getting them to sign in on the sign-in sheet, giving them that paper application, or ensuring that they have already filled out an online application. Next slide, please. So that's kind of, that's it pretty much. Food service professionals make a difference by providing nutritious and healthy meals to fuel the minds of our students. And somebody awesome said that. I don't know who, but it's somebody wonderful because that is what we do. Truly, truly what we do. Um, if you need any further information on this, please feel free to reach out. I can pass you along to one of my team members who did an excellent job help, you know, setting this up. And if you want to follow us on Instagram, we're at Capo Food, and our website is capstranohealthyliving.net. So. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kristen. A, a round of applause to you, too. I, yeah, just such a wonderful presentation, also. Beautiful slides. I love your credits. Um, but just, Let's yeah, one little nugget I took away of just that the picture reinforces the concept of, of the kind of work. I thought that was so great. Um, and so helpful to hear such, you know, detail and specifics about the process. So thank you so much. I'm um, seeing lots of thanks in the, the chat as well. So up, up next, we're going to take a quick uh, five minute break. So we're going to take a, a stretch break, a water break, a bio break. Um, feel free to put your questions in the chat and um, follow along with Mr. Michael Burns for a, a physical activity stretch break. Hello, everybody. So if you're sticking around and uh, want to do a stretch break and feel a little bit better and get energized and um, hang out, we're going to we're going to do that. I'm going to set my computer up, see if we can get me in here. Give me one second. All right. All right. Hopefully everybody can see me as best they can.
All right, so first what we're gonna do is we're gonna stretch out our neck. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look up. So put your chin up, it's like this, and try to reach your jaw. So you stretch out your jaw muscles and reach up, this. All right, come back. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the sides of our necks. So we're gonna, we're gonna actually flex. Anytime you flex one side of a, of a body part, the opposite side relaxes. So as we stretch our neck to the right, or it looks like to the left for you, we're flexing here, stretch out this, the other side. Now we go to the other side. Good. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring our neck and we're gonna actually stretch our neck this way. We're gonna come here and bring our head back this way. Fantastic. Now we're going to do rotate our head like this. We're going to do this five times one direction. Don't count because I probably already lost count. Five times other way. One, two, three, four, five. All right. Now what we're going to do is we're going to reach up, reach for the sky. Now you just don't want to put your hands up. This is not the goal of the whole stretch. What you want to do is you want to try to reach. Try to reach the ceiling as high as you can. Reach, 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 reach up, reach up, reach up. And what you're doing right now is you are flexing your trapezius and your shoulder muscles, but you're relaxing your lats right here on the side, okay? And you're also stretching out your back. Now what you're gonna do is you're gonna reach out to the front of you. Now again, don't just put your arms out. That's not the goal. Is to try to, try to reach, try to touch a wall that's in front of you. Put as much effort as you can. Reach it, reach it, reach it. Touch that wall, touch that wall. Touch, touch, touch. All right, good. Now what you're going to do is you're going to do the exact opposite. You went to the front. And now what you just did when you reached the front, you actually were flexing your chest right here, but you're stretching out your back muscles all throughout here and releasing the tension. But now you're going to do the exact opposite. You're going to come and you're going to try to reach back as far as you can. You're going to try to bring your shoulders, your shoulder blades back as far as you can. And again, it's not just to put your arms back, but try to flex the muscles. You're trying to flex your back muscles all right here, like this. And what's happening is when you do that, you're stretching out your chest. You see right there, stretch your chest. All right, fantastic. Now what you wanna do is you're gonna reach out to the sides as far as you can. Stretch, 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 stretch. Again, try to reach the walls. Try to reach the walls or your partner or anything else on the side of you. Try to stretch. Good. All right. Now you're going to do, you're going to reach down. So you already flexed here, right? Your trapezius shoulders. Now you're going to relax that by actually taking your arms to your side and trying to reach the floor. Try to reach the floor. And this will stretch out your trapezius, your neck muscles, and your shoulders, your deltoids. And now what you're actually flexing is you're actually flexing the sides, your lats. So you're actually getting a little bit of lat workout and you're gonna stretch. Okay, good. Now shoulder shrugs. So we're gonna go back first. We're gonna do five, three, four, five. All right, now you go forward. One, two, three, four, five. All right, good. Now you're gonna take, you're gonna leave one arm on the side. You're gonna put one arm up top right here and you're actually going to try to reach the sky with your right arm and reach the floor with your left arm. And you're going to flex your obliques right here. And when you flex them right here, feel it, you're actually stretching this other side right here. And you're gonna do this, we're gonna do this for 10 seconds, but we're probably at 10 right now. All right, other side. So now you're gonna, you're flexing actually your um, obliques on your right side and you're stretching the other side out. And of course, you're also doing the same for your back. So one side of your back is flexing, the other side should be stretching. Okay, good. Now what you're gonna do, hope everybody can see, but you're gonna keep your back straight and you're gonna keep it straight, straight, straight as you bend over like this. And what's happening is you're gonna stretch your hamstrings you're throwing your hips up and out. And then you're going to feel the back of your legs when you throw your hips out. The, thing, the secret is to keep the hips thrown out. Don't arch your back. 
because once you arch your back, you take the stretch off of your hamstrings, and now you're going to put it on your lower back, which is not, not a problem, but that's not our goal right now. It is to stretch the hamstrings. All right, good. Now, if you can, you have to know your back on this one, but you're going to do the exact opposite. You're going to actually arch backwards if you can. You know your back, but you reach back, and now you're stretching out your oblique, uh, your abdominal muscles, and you're flexing your back. All right, good. Come back to the center. All right, now you know you just already stretched out your you stretched out your hamstrings. Now what you're going to do is you're going to flex your abdominals and throw your hips up, and you're going to flex your abdominals, and this will stretch out your back and strengthen your core right here. We're going to hold this, fill your abdominals, stretch it, or flex it, flex it, flex it. All right, good. Now what we're going to do. We're going to do a little bit of hip rotation. So you're going to come here, rotate the hips, almost like a hula. How are we doing on time? We're we're just about at time. If you want to let this be your last uh, our last All stretch right. for today, it's the last hula hoop. <laughs> All right. Well, I'm glad I have the opportunity to do this with you because I need an excuse to get up and move myself. <laughs> All right. Awesome. Thank you, everybody, for Thank spending your you. time exercising with Mr. Burns. <laughs> Mr. Burns, awesome. Thank you so much. That felt great. I was off camera, but but right there stretching with you. My neck feels a lot better. So thank you so much for, for the great stretch break and hope others enjoyed if you were able to join too. Uh, so with that, we're going to go ahead. I'm, I have the pleasure of introducing our, our next very special guest, uh, Ms. Donna Martin. Donna is the Director of School Nutrition Programs for Burke County Public Schools, coming all the way to us from Georgia. Uh, the Burke County School Nutrition Program serves 4,200 students across five schools, offering breakfast, lunch, after-school snacks, supper, and the summer feeding program. Um, I, I learned a fun fact about Donna as well. Um, Donna was the first school nutrition director to be the president of the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics. So um, really a pleasure to have you. Thank you so much. And, and we look forward to your presentation. Well, thank you, Kelly, so much. And let me just tell you, I'm honored to be here. And I hope you don't mind my Southern accent. I'll try not to say too many y'alls, but um, we were politically correct before anybody else was politically correct saying y'all. Um, thank you, Janet and Kristen, for doing such a fantastic job. You've really helped me with my presentation, so I'll get to skip over several things, but next slide. So this just shows you where Burke County is. We are a very large rural county, so we're hoping to be able to do the non-congregate option this summer. We are a CEP district, 100% um, CEP. Um, we have very good breakfast participation, lunch participation, and that's me with my BFF, Michelle Obama. So um, she's been such a strong supporter for school nutrition, and I hope she continues to be. Next slide. So are you looking for staff in all the wrong places? And recruiting is a challenge for all of us. And I'm gonna give you tips on how to recruit. And my, my goal is hopefully you'll find something that will work for you. Next slide, Tommy. Okay, so bus drivers. How many of you thought about using bus drivers or bus monitors? We love them because they're already on payroll. They're already getting benefits. They get to school about eight o'clock. They don't have to get on the buses till about 2.30. So they've got time in there to work for us. So we have employed, you know, and used them as subs a lot. And they love the extra money because they're not getting paid very much like our staff's not getting paid very much. Next slide. My next tip is using students. So we have used a lot of students. And our high school students are desperate for money. And so we employ them, we just pay them minimum wage, but they're glad to get the job. They don't have to work nights, they don't have to work weekends. You know, they, if they work at McDonald's, they work till like midnight. So the families love, they're already at school and they don't need transportation. So we've employed them during the year, especially with our supper program and just coming in whenever they can come in to dish up stuff, pan up stuff and do whatever run our pizza machines, whatever, help us loading boxes. They have been great. And we also usually apply for a No Kid Hungry Ambassador every summer, so that's another option for you to get help. Next slide. 
also, have you thought about college students? So this year we've been actually employing some college students because, and what we've told them is we'll work around your schedule. So if you can come in for two hours in the morning or six hours in the afternoon or work into the evening, we're so desperate for staff that we don't care when you can come in and work. There's always jobs that you can do. We don't necessarily have to have you at lunchtime or have to have you at breakfast time. They like the flexibility. They like the fact that when they're, their schedules change, we allow them to change their schedules with us. Next slide. So have you thought about going back to your retired school nutrition employees? Our employees were tired thinking they were gonna be making so much money and they were gonna be so happy, but they found out A, they were bored and B, they weren't making enough money. So we offered to let them come back for their same salary. And um, so they have loved coming back and they're already trained, already ready to go. So don't forget about those retired school nutrition employees, reach back out to them. Next slide. The next thing is looking at your culinary programs in your district, you may have one in your school and those kids may be looking for some part-time work. You may have a culinary program in your community where those people are looking for actual work and job experience. So those are a great place to recruit people while they're working in the programs that will recruit people once they graduate from the program. Next slide. So what about temp agencies? A lot of people are doing temp agencies because they're just getting so desperate. And so you may have to pay a little bit more for the employee, but keep in mind, you don't have to pay for benefits. Again, they can do a lot of the simple tasks. I tell, I tell people, we're not going to ask you to come in and make lasagna for a thousand people or make homemade cinnamon rolls. We're going to give you basic tasks, but temp agencies are a great, a great place if you're really getting desperate. Next slide. So I love looking at substitute teachers. So they're already on payroll and they may not be being called in every single day. So I've gotten the substitute teacher list and I've started contacting some of them and said, if you're not substitute teaching, would you like to come and substitute in the lunchroom? And I've gotten some employees that way. Next slide. What about parents? So in some districts, you have a lot of parents who are looking for benefits. Their husband may have a job that they don't get benefits from. So they're willing to come work, you know, maybe four or six hours a day for you just to get health insurance or just to get benefits. But parents love working in the school system because they're on the same exact schedule as the kids. They have the same holidays off, weekends, and, and summer break and those kind of things. So parents are a really good source. Next slide. Advertise, advertise, advertise. Kristen talked about this, did a really good job of talking about this, but certainly social you know, media things, advertise on your school website, in newspaper, newsletters, advertise, advertise. All, most of that is free and, and you never know when you're gonna pick up somebody. So here's a great Instagram and Facebook post for you to use. So I'm gonna give you a lot of examples and I know you're gonna get these slides. So I hate reinventing the wheel. So here's an Instagram post and a Facebook post. This is Lamar County Schools, and this is what they put on their front of their webpage saying that they need employees. And so every time somebody goes to look at a menu, they're going to see this, that they need food assistance. They need food assistance. And sooner or later, those people are going to call up and say, OK, you got me. Next slide. So these are some more ways to market on social media. So YouTube is a great way to put a video out there. And I love what Kristen said about pictures. So you can actually put pictures of your employees working. What is it that you do? It doesn't cost anything to do this. So you can even have your high school students put a video together for you. And, and that'll get them involved in, in learning more about you. But put it on YouTube all about that you have a job opening. What do you pay? What are the benefits? What are the advantages? Because as y'all know, there are some advantages of working in school nutrition. Next slide. So we talked about advertising and advertising and setting up a, a job fair, but advertise, advertise. And this is a, a sample sign with pointing which way to go. And you just put these up and put them out every time you do it. A lot of districts will have a certain day a month that they say, the second Wednesday of every month from one to four, we're going to do a job fair. Next slide. 
So this is what Wichita Public Schools does, and this is their advertising, and they have these are the flyers that they send out. And I love that they put pictures of kids on there because isn't that what we all are doing? And we're really caring for the kids. So I think sometimes a picture may motivate them just to say, golly, I would love to feed these kids. Next slide. So here's another example of flyers and where we, we put them. We send them home in our meal boxes that we do in the summer. We put QR codes on our meal boxes. We give them to our graduating seniors who may not be going to college or maybe looking for a job and don't have any idea of what they're going to do. And we can kind of hook them in really quickly. Churches are a great option. Sometimes you have senior citizens there that are looking for jobs. Next one. So here's some signage for um, some flyers for job fairs. And you know you can do it and do it with another a group or you can do it by yourself. So you can either, you know, sometimes you can get more people that may come looking to be a custodian or something like that and you have enticed them to come work for you. This is a sign that we put outside, a banner that we put outside saying job fair is today. So that they know exactly if they're driving by, they know today is the day. Next slide. So also you can advertise on, um, on, on Facebook and um, places like that. These, these are just some examples of pictures. And this again, one with the worker working and the kid in there, I think that, that brings both things together really well. So these are just some really good examples for you, what we do and what we pay and what the hours are. They're paying $13.82 an hour. I know y'all pay more than that. This is signage outside and it tells you how to apply online and the schools are the jobs are available at this school and sometimes people say well I don't want to apply because I don't want to go across the county. But if you put a sign out saying and the parents driving up to that school and they love that school and you say I'm hiring at this school that may make them apply. And this is a, a, a banner that you can put in central office or in the school. When they walk into the school, they're walking the kids down the hall, they see it. Oh, competitive pay, no nights, no weekends, no holidays, feed our kids. Great, great signage. Next one. So this is actually on TV. A lot of TV stations are willing, you can call them up and say, look, we're doing a job fair. Will you advertise for us? And they, it's part of their community service and they'll actually put a thing on there saying they're doing a job fair and that they're interviewing for food service workers or custodians or whatever. So reach out to your TV stations to get a little bit of free advertising. Next slide. So I love this, a business card. Take your business card and on the back of it, put a QR code and say, we are hiring. So if you're out and about and you're in a restaurant and you have a a server that is really good and you know they don't have any benefits, give them a card and say, hey, you need to come work for our school system. We have great benefits and competitive pay. And here's the, code, the QR code on how to scan, where to get an application and find out more about it. Simple and easy. Next slide. Use your district vehicle, advertise on them. You can put the QR codes on there. Tell them that you're hiring. Those trucks are just moving free advertisements to you all over the county. Next one. So marketing your position. And so, you know, send my school district sends e-blast to parents. And so you can e-blast to parents that you're looking for employees, you know, contacting not only your local news, your newspaper, your radio outlets. Working with any ethnic groups in the area that may have language barriers that you might need to help them knowing how to apply because they can't read your signs and things like that. Working with your senior citizens, your staffing agencies, and like I said, advertise to those graduating seniors. Next slide. So, have, so this is have your employees spread the word. A lot of districts are giving bonuses if the employees find an employee to come and they refer them and they come to work, give them a bonus. It'd be worth it to do that. Next slide. They are good words of mouth for you, for sure. Especially when you treat them like Janet does with bringing them back to school. So I wanna talk about retention now. So you've hired them, let's talk about how do you retain them. So the first suggestions I'm gonna give, next slide, 
cost a little bit of money, but um, Janet and Kristen talked about what it means to have good employee morale so we can skip this slide. But what are some things that you can do? Give a retention bonus. A lot of school districts are doing retention bonuses. Sometimes they're giving one at Christmas, like $500 at Christmas, and then they're giving $500 at the end of the year. Some school districts are giving one at the end of the year, and then they're giving one if the employee comes back to work in the fall. I love that. If they know they're going to get $500 or $1,000 for coming back to school, get your board to help you approve that. I love that. Next slide. I also think increasing your pay is always a, a bonus to hiring employees. And, you know, if you get to increase it, get the TV stations to advertise that, that you're increasing the pay and then that gets the word out and people go, oh, gosh, they're paying better. I may need to go down there and apply for a job. But, you know, do a survey. You know, for us, we're competing with McDonald's and Burger King and and Walmart and stuff like that. And we've got to be competitive because those jobs are easier than my jobs making homemade cinnamon rolls in my kitchen. Next slide. T-shirt. My employees love T-shirts. So during COVID, I was giving them these lunch lady T-shirts and these COVID-19 essential, you know, T-shirts and things like that. But they love a T-shirt. T-shirts don't cost a lot of money, but they love a good T-shirt. Next slide. Jackets. I bought jackets for all my employees that 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 worked through the pandemic because a lot of my employees opted not to work. We fed our kids throughout the entire pandemic, and so I gave them um, these jackets that said "Lunch Lady Rosie the Riveter" on it. it. Had a fork and a spoon on. I mean, a, yeah, fork and a spoon on it. They were so proud of that, and they got to wear those jackets. And the people that didn't work didn't get the jackets. So. It was a real motivation that the jackets didn't cost that much, but I love the advertising around the county. Chef's coats, you know, we have a lot of school districts have a program that if you do good and you take training classes and you move up the line, then you get to wear a chef's coat instead of a school uniform or whatever kind of a uniform you wear. They get to wear these chef's coats and they feel so proud to wear these chef's coats and, and the kids really notice who's wearing a chef's coat. So that might be something you could do to motivate your employees. So some other things that you can do that don't cost very much because I know everybody's budgets are, are strapped. Let's talk about those now. I love these staff shout out boards where everybody in the school can, can do a shout out to the employees in the lunchroom or all over the school. They see somebody doing something good. They see somebody with a smiling face, but you know this is a staff out to, Shout out to Kelly because she did such a good job with, you know, the training or whatever. But staff, so people love being recognized and put it on a bulletin board so everybody in the school can see it. Next one. This I love. How many of us, it doesn't just make our heart sing when a kid writes a note saying thank you for what you did. And so getting to school, ask the principal to get the kids to write notes or ask teachers to get the kids to write notes and talk about their favorite meal or their favorite lunch lady or what they like about school breakfast or school lunch or just a thank you and, and have it spread out during the year. It doesn't cost anything and it really is, uh, it makes the kids appreciate the staff better too. I love this, be a bucket filler upper instead of a bucket emptier. A lot of times we have employees or bucket emptiers, but if you put all your staff name on a bulletin board and then you put the cards out and, and you can either do it just in the lunchroom or you can have just each other fill up the buckets and say, thank you, Susie, for helping me make the lasagna this week or, or thank you for you know coming into work and staying over because we needed help. And, you can thank each other, or you can let the whole school fill up the employees' buckets. Either way, but it doesn't cost anything, and everybody loves reading a, 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 a filler up bucket note about themselves. Next slide. So, team building activities are fun to do during um, the beginning of the year, back to school, or on on a training day. They don't cost anything but it is such a great way to increase morale and, and, and get the, the, the teams working together. And they are really, really fun. Next slide. 
This I love. This is recognizing, you know, having an employee of the month and you can just put up a bulletin board and, and recognize um, the employee of the month. You're also going to have an employee of the, of the quarter and employee of the year. So if you do end of the year banquets or if the school system does any banquets or anything like that, recognizing your employees and giving them a plaque or something like that just makes them feel so good. I guarantee the employee of the year is going to come back to work the next year. Next slide. So shouting out on social media is a great way. Every district has a social media cha channel. So, you know, on this one, um, you actually ask one of your employees to shout out about another employee in the district. So you get one of the managers to say, would you do a shout out about one of your employees in the lunchroom or an employee in another school that may be a manager that loaned you some food or helped you out or something like that. So just doing some shout outs on social media and then everybody else sees it. And people like that. Next slide. This is actually where the State Department actually did some shout outs to districts. So in our state, we do a, a, a tray blazer thing, a meal um, tray of the week. So you can actually put in your school district to the state and they'll put it on the state so they can put it on the California nutrition webpage about meals or shouting out to your school district and things like that. So we turn in our trays and if we get to be the tray of the week, then we get a shout out. So I love doing that with the state and then it goes out all over the state. This is just spotlighting some of your employees on social media, talking about their family, what grandmother doesn't want to have pictures of her grandchildren and, and have them and then you tag them and it just goes viral. Next one. So this is, I love Walter Campbell in South Carolina. He always does um, Twitter and he does a lot of tweets about his employees and taking pictures and, and recognizing them and tagging them. And then they tag it and go on for it. And it doesn't cost anything, but I love using Twitter. Next one. So this, I think a lot of school districts are starting to do, they're giving each school their own school nutrition page where they get to post pictures of their meals, of their staff, of their events. And they just take a lot of pride in doing this and they get a lot of likes and they get the family members involved. So I love, if, you're, if your district will allow you to do it, let your school nutrition program have their own school nutrition page where they can post all about what they're doing. I, I don't think that group looks so snappy. Um, this is celebrating birthdays, you know, every, you can do it every month, you can do it every quarter, but, you know, just recognizing whose birthday it is and celebrating it. Recognizing employees at board meetings, just bringing your employees in and talking about what a good job they are doing and making sure the board knows that during school lunch hero day, you might bring some employees in and recognize them or recognize the employees of the month or whatever, but making sure your board knows what you're doing. This is my very favorite tip, a time off pass. I would love it if the superintendent would give me a 15 minute free pass, a 30 minute free pass, an hour off that I can do anytime I want. So just have your give your passes to the manager when they catch somebody doing something good, give them 15 minutes off. Believe me, they'll, they'll love it. Next one. Donna, we've got about two minutes left if you want to um, okay. wrap up in about two right, minutes. Well, I'm Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> this is having school administrators serving on your line just to give your employees a break so they know what you're doing. You know, doing an incentive that if you're short staffed, give your employees more money, those that are having to work. This is an in, inexpensive little gift that you can give them. And these were things that we did during COVID that didn't cost very much, but just to touch the employee's heart. Next one. These are little, those gifts that, that Kristen was talking about, the district-wide gifts. And this is doing theme days. People love doing theme days. So let your staff do theme days. Next one. Holiday dress up, that boosts morale. And then this, buy them lunch. Nobody buys them lunch. Y'all talked about that. Buy them lunch. Do sweet treats for them. These were some COVID cookies that I had done that we passed out to the employees. Next slide. And then celebrating Lunch Hero Day. I'm buying t-shirts for all my staff, which is May 5th, 2023. And that's a good time to go to the board to celebrate them. 
And then this is caught doing good coupons. And then this is bringing the state director in or, or posting your sanitation scores and your serve safe certificates to recognize your employees. I think we're about to end. And this is um, national awards. Nominate your employees for national awards. You're, they're worth it. And continue to invest in your employees by doing training. Ah. Just do some three by five cards so that you can get to know your employees and then posting pictures of your meals on websites or our meal viewers during the lunchroom. And let's see, I think that's, oh, if you wanna do a photo contest and then making sure you go to staff meetings. So that's all I have to say, but thank you so much for allowing me to be here today. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Donna. Those were some wonderful suggestions. Oh my gosh. On the TV, the business cards with the QR code. Oh my gosh. And the trucks is free advertising. I could go on and on. Some really wonderful suggestions. Thank you for sharing your, your expertise. You really lived up to your title of using creativity <laughs> and innovation to find staff. So, so thank you so much. I know you're able to stick around. Um, we've got one more update and we'll have time for some Q&A after that. So thank you so much, Donna. Right. Um, and I'll pass it next to uh, Robin for some No Kid Hungry school meals updates. Thanks so much, Robin. Awesome. Thank you so much, Kelly. Um, I just have a few resources and uh, opportunities to share with y'all that you're definitely going to want to take advantage of. Uh, next slide, Donnie. So, uh, first of all, the first opportunity I want you to be aware of is that No Kid Hungry is providing summer grants this year to sponsors who are looking to serve under the Rural Non-Congregate Meal Waiver. This can provide a great opportunity to reach some kids in your community that you have not previously been able to reach in the summer because of the congregate requirement. So now you may be thinking, but Robin, according to the USDA rural designation map, our county is purple and designated as metropolitan. Um, and that may be true. However, you may still have an opportunity to apply for your district or a site within your district as a rural pocket of your community. So if you feel like grant funds will help you um, provide a better non-congregate service, please do fill out our grant inquiry form by April 28th, uh, which is next Friday. Um, after the review of inquiry, sponsors will be selected to apply for the grant. Um, also, be sure to listen to the CDE Town Hall uh, next Tuesday. They will be talking a little bit more about what this waiver can mean for you. Um, and do reach out to your CDE analyst if you'd like to request this waiver for one or more of your site. Um, and if you have any questions, please get in contact with your Open Hunger Program Manager. Uh, next slide, please. And fasten your seatbelts because we have five national webinars coming up over the next couple of months. We'll be covering everything from summer EBT, transitioning cold BI service to hot service, non-congregate summer meals, transitioning summer meals to after school meals, and much more. Um, and even if you do have schedule conflicts, I always recommend register for the webinars you're interested in anyways, because you will always receive a recording and follow-up material. And aside from our fantastic webinars, No Kid Hungry has a suite of resources available on our Center for Best Practices uh, website. I've included the QR code for those that want to get the link right now. Um, and these are just some of the many resources we provide for summer. So um, if you can think of it, we probably have a resource for that. So please do check out our Center for Best Practices. Uh, and this spring, we are also looking to recognize and celebrate some of the unsung hunger heroes that make significant contributions to ending childhood hunger in our communities. We are specifically seeking to recognize teachers, custodians, and school nutrition line staff with this year's No Kid Hungry uh, California Hunger Hero Awards. This award will be bestowed upon any individual whose leadership, support, and actions have had a positive impact on kids and their families. So if you or uh, and so if you have someone you would like to nominate, please do fill out our quick and simple Google form. We've extended the deadline um, till tomorrow so that y'all um, on this webinar can have can get a chance to hear about it. And we will put the link in the chat. Uh, next slide, please. So thank you so much for allowing me to share the information with you. Um, we will uh, put the links in the chat and you will also receive them in your follow up emails and slide deck. I'm now going to pass the mic over to our fabulous CNAP leader uh, in the OC, Gina Osborne, to lead our Q&A session. Thank you, Hi, everybody. So it looks like we don't have any questions in the Q&A or in the chat, but um, I can read um, 
Oh, never mind. One just came in. Um, Kelly was asking Janet, can you tell us more about the Disney training? Of course, there is a Disney Institute. And if you look on the website on Disney.com, it actually gives you the information where you can choose which session you would like to go to. And they're all about customer service and how we treat our people and how we treat our students. And so with the kit funding and the extra funds that we have right now, that is available to us. They won't come to our sites, but we can go to them. And we're pretty close to Disney, so that works for us. Okay, thank you, Janet. Um, I don't see any other questions. Um, we just have a few comments. Um, the first few, I believe, are for Janet. Yeah, so great photo of all your staff. Um, awesome, Janet, wonderful presentation, such creativity. Your staff must love you. And then Joni re uh, replied, great job. And yes, we do love her. Um, Robin, great idea to call and schedule interviews and expedite the hiring process. So that was for Kristen. Um, and then also for Kristen, thanks for sharing your practical tips for implementing a great job fair. And then um, some thank yous to Michael for helping us get stretched out a little bit. Um, and then uh, Robin Hernandez, so many great ideas. Love the signage and business card with a QR code. And, and then just overall amazing ideas. Thank you. Thank everybody so much. And um, let's see. Oh, and then last, um, creative ideas and places to look for school nutrition employees. Bus drivers, substitute teachers, college students, and more. Lots of great ideas to boost morale and satisfaction too. And then let's see, we do have a question now for Kristen. How do you get the funding for all of your hiring signage? Hi there. Did you want me to answer it live or sure. in the chat? Um, we actually use our budget. Um, just fund 13 to, to make, create signage and, and things like that. So we charge it to like marketing or something like that. Um, we have had no kid hungry grants in the past that we have used, um, to, to do marketing and things like that too. So we don't have any things specific to hiring through no kid hungry currently more towards our CEP stuff right now. Um, but it, it, something that our district has allowed us to do. And we're lucky that we have our graphics department right next door to our central kitchen. So they are incredibly helpful um, and, and make things very easy for us. Thank you, Kristen. And then um, we had a request to share the link for the Summer Meals Grant Opportunity. And I believe Robin did put that in the chat for everybody. Yes, she did. Okay, any other questions? Tina, I was gonna come off of mute for this one because I can't even type it fast enough. I had a question for Donna. Um, I was wondering about um, utilizing the, the bus drivers or um, in particular or other um, district staff for um, nutrition. Uh, staffing purposes. Um, did you ever run into um, any issues with um, just crossover as far as like the uh, the union um, bargaining agreements and their and their jobs um, designations? Or do you have to hire them as employees in both locations? I'm just wondering the logistics of that. <laughs> yeah, so I hate to have tell you, but we are a right to work state and we do not have unions. So therefore we've not had any issues with using them and our, our transportation director loves that we're using them because that gives them more money and then they're much more likely to stay on because they're not paid very much and we desperately need bus drivers. So um, for us to give them more work and more money makes them stay, but we're not unionized. So I, I'm sorry, I can't help you with that. Okay. Maybe somebody else on the call would know about that. 
And then Donna, we have another question for you. Uh, do you need to complete PARS forms for all of your staff crossing over? So um, we, we have separate time cards for supper. So for all our employees that work breakfast, lunch, and after school snack, those are all done through the National School Lunch Program. But anybody that works supper, we just do a separate time card so that we don't have to do PAR forms. So they, everybody for supper is on a separate time clock. And then for summer feeding, when they do summer feeding, they're on time clocks and all that is paid separately and it's reported on their, their um, paychecks for summer feeding and supper is reported as you know supper program money because they come in and monitor that and audit that. And so um, we, we make them clock in and clock out for different programs. So we don't have to do the PAR forms. Those PAR forms are a lot. Thank you, Donna. All right, well, I don't see any other questions um, in the question and answer or in the chat. So with that, um, I will pass it back over to Kelly. Thank you so much, uh, Gina. Thanks for all of your questions. Um, so as, as always, we'll wrap it up with some inspiration. So we'll hear from Matt Upton with five secrets of a big why. So Matt, over to you. What an amazing group of people that presented today. Gosh, about legislation and celebrating our people job fairs, recruiting and retraining and retaining everybody, which really shows that we have a condition going on among our people. In, um, in all the school districts that I've been at this season, virtually every single one of them have the exact same situation. They have a low pressure zone in the area of morale among our staff. I think there's three areas that they have this in and it affects the whole of our school restaurants. There's a low morale in their philanthropic life as well as their professional life and their personal and private life. And it spills over into the school restaurants. And when there's a low pressure zone, what happens is these storms, these winds of adversity fly into us. Just a couple of weeks ago, I was up in 29 Palms, and as I drove in there on a Monday, a low pressure zone kicked up a sandstorm, and you couldn't see across the street. It was a deep fog. Sand was hitting against my vehicle, and it was rather treacherous. In fact, some of the sand uh, helped me almost become sick, and I still got to serve and still got to be part of the school restaurant system and give them some encouragement and become their CEO, their chief encouragement officer. And what we've got to realize is we've got to keep focusing on the why, not only the why of the school restaurant, but the why of why they're there. And they are there for basically two reasons. The first reason is, is in their personal and private life, they're there for their family. Secondarily, they are there because they have some philanthropic need to be there, to earn some money, to be able to pour into the community. And they find themselves being able to do that by being at our school restaurants. And after they come to our school restaurants, what happens is they fall in love with the students and their co-staff. And what happens is you and I sometimes get tired of reminding them of their why. And so that's why we have to spend time recruiting and retraining and celebrating who they are and celebrating everything that they do. And when we can help them rediscover their why, there's five secrets that come out of that. Five secret energy levels that balance out the low pressure zone and stops the adversity. It stops the winds of adversity and the storms that come at us so incessantly and again and again and again. And the answer is just to refocus on the why. So let me give you the five secret power sources in our why. Number one, when we really know 
what our why is. It creates stamina and energy to be able to go through the challenging times, to be able to go through those challenging times and come out as a conqueror rather than a conquered person through the challenging time. The second secret is our why refines our motives. When we know what our why is, we get to rediscover our own motive of being there. And remember, everybody has three motives for showing up at the school restaurant on a regular basis. First and foremost is their family. It's their private and personal life. Secondarily, it's their philanthropic life. And what we would like to be first is really third, is the students and staff. And then number three, the, the secret of why, the third secret is this, why produces clarity. And we ought to come back and circle back to the why on a regular basis. As leaders and people who influence in school nutrition and in school-based restaurants, we've got to talk about the why so often that you and I sort of get tired of saying the why. And when you and I are tired, when we feel like we've said it too much, we're just beginning to be heard. We're just beginning to communicate and connect with the why and then influencing them to come back and really get recommitted to it. Secret number four, secret number four, the why compels us to continue amid the storms and the winds of adversity. Even some of you over these last couple of years have probably considered getting out of school nutrition and doing something else, going and just doing something else. Let me tell you something, is after you go through the storm and you've stuck it out, where you get a deeper resolve, a deeper insight, deeper commitment. And I want to compel and encourage you and invite you to recommit to the mission of school nutrition through school restaurants and cafes throughout our nation. And then number five, number five, the fifth and final secret of knowing our why and finding the power source that's in a why is simply this, our why illuminates the way to the what and the how as we go forward. As Dr. Betty Crocker mentioned earlier about legislation and some of the things that are gonna be going away. Listen, really being committed to our why will illuminate the what and the how as we find new territory. It's always done that. It's always done that because when we know our why, we get recommitted and uh, just talk about the why often. And everybody that's working in your school restaurant, everybody that is serving in your school restaurant is there for a mix of three things. They're there for their personal and private life, which is their family. They're there because they want to have some resources to be able to reinvest in a philanthropic way. And they're there in their professional life to be able to invest in students and their co-staff. Thanks again, QCC, for allowing me to be part of this. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, Matt. Thanks for, for always being here to, to inspire us, to encourage us, to remind us of, of why we're all here. Um, yeah, really appreciate your commitment to, to everyone here and, and participating and, and wrapping us up every time. So thank you so much, Matt. Thank you, uh, thank you all for being here, for, for taking the time again to join us for our 10th webinar. Um, you know, hope this has continued to, to serve you all and be helpful to, to be inspired. I know I'm feeling very inspired today um, and, and to go walk away with lots of great suggestions, new ideas. Um, the webinar is recorded if you want to share it with others. The slides will be shared. Um, I know there are lots of wonderful pictures and suggestions, so you could review that again and, and get some more um, nuggets and, and takeaways from, from the slides as well. So when we wrap up here, when the webinar ends, um, you will get a, a link that automatically will pop up to take the post webinar survey. Please, please take a moment to fill that out, provide your feedback, let us know what would be helpful for uh, the next webinar, the next topics, the next things you're, you're thinking about and, and are on your radar. Uh, so thank you all so much and um, we'll see you next time.
Take care.